Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This should be the third video in the series for chapter three. Normally, I usually have some kind of handout for you, something that uh, you can fill out. I'm not sure how I'm gonna be doing this virtually, whether I gave you a piece of paper or something on a Google Doc. But in this case, I'm not giving you a handout. This video is typically so short that I, I just ask people to write it down on loose leaf. If you're uh, writing this stuff down on your computer, put it in a Word doc or a Google Doc someplace, you won't lose it. All right, so let's jump into the notes and we will talk about photosynthesis. All right, so here we are in bioenergetics photosynthesis. Now, before we begin, yes, photosynthesis is extremely complicated. No, I am not going to cover every single detail. All right, I'm going to simplify this down to its most basic understanding. Uh, Maybe we'll talk about the more, the greater details of the steps later on, but right now, let's just cover point A to point B. Photosynthesis is a chemical reaction, and many of you probably are currently in chemistry or have already taken chemistry, so you would recognize that chemical reactions come with an equation. This side are the molecules going into the chemical reaction, the substrates, and then this arrow represents the actual reaction taking place. And then this side are the chemicals coming out of the reaction, the products. So what goes in, what comes out? So let's talk about, let's look at what goes in. Let me put these words down for you so you can follow along. What goes in? Carbon dioxide and water. We mentioned this already in the last video that plants breathe carbon dioxide and they drink water. For each chemical reaction involved, we are going to need six carbon dioxide. That's what this six in the front means. The big six in front means we have six of these molecules and we have six of these molecules, six carbon dioxides and six waters. That's important. And if you're not following along, the words are written down here as well. And then sunlight electromagnetic energy, solar radiation. I don't care what words you use, they're all the same thing. This energy is going to be used to create a chemical reaction that is going to rearrange these atoms into different molecules. All right, so check it out. Six carbon dioxides. We just care about the carbon, right? So six carbons on this side right here. There's your six carbons. And we didn't create any, we didn't create anything new. We took what's over here and we moved it over here. So six carbons, boom. We'll come back to the oxygen, all right? And then six waters. Well, H2 times six is H12. And then O times six is O6. So when we have six carbons, six waters, carb and water is hydration. So carbohydrate. We made a glucose molecule which is a type of sugar, by the way. If I didn't say that before, I'm saying it now, this is a type of sugar. And then what were we left with? What, we, what did we not use? These six O2 molecules, these six O2 molecules, we did not use them. So here they are, the six O2 molecules, they're just leftover pieces, the plant doesn't want them. So the plant gets rid of them and yay, we get to breathe. And if we eat the plant, we get to eat the glucose. So this is all around good for us, hooray. All of this, that this whole equation is going to take place in that thing we talked about, that organelle from the last video called the chloroplast. This is the part of the plant that makes the plant green. It is full of a chemical called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is green, so plants look green because of that. And it's the reason why we don't look green is because we don't have a chloroplast, so we can't make our own food. That's why we have to eat. So let's talk about that chloroplast since it's so important for the plants. It is a small green organelle. Here it is. This, here's the picture. If you're uh, writing your notes down on loose leaf, I would suggest trying to draw this and labeling it. If you are doing this on a Google Doc or a Word Doc, feel free to copy and paste. Take a screenshot of that. Uh, but this small green organelle is green because like I just said, it is full of a chemical, a pigment called chlorophyll. 
And chlorophyll's only job is to be green. That's it. It doesn't, the chemical doesn't actively do anything. It just sits there and is green. The reason for that is because green just happens to do a really good job of absorbing sunlight. Uh, the example I, I said in the vocab is that if you go outside in a black shirt, they say don't do that because black absorbs sunlight and the shirt's just going to get really, really hot in the summer and it's a bad idea. Well, actually, a good idea because if the shirt absorbs sunlight, then your skin isn't, so you don't get burnt, right? That's a different story. For the plants, turns out black doesn't actually happen in nature. You can't find actual black anywhere. So green is the next best thing. Green will work fine. So it has a green pigment to absorb all of that sunlight and then use that sunlight in a chemical reaction. So what's this chloroplast made out of? Because this is gonna be kind of important here. First off, it has a double membrane. It has two membranes. All the really important ones have two membranes. Inside, you are gonna see, what if you look in this picture, it looks like a stack of Mentos or a stack of coins. Each little coin is called a thylakoid. And each one, each thylakoid, is a sac-like membrane in the chloroplast. It basically, it's a sac of chlorophyll. That's all it is. These are little, each little coin, each little thylakoid is a little chlorophyll balloon. And then granum is just a uh, terminology. It's a stack of thylakoids. So here's one thylakoid, and here's a granum. There's your one thylakoid. And now we have a granum of thylakoids. So it's just a fancy word for a group. Like you have a school of fish or a pack of wolves, a flock of birds. We have a granum of thylakoids. And the stroma is all of this empty space in between the grana. It's not actually empty, it's full of liquid. That space outside the thylakoid is where some major chemical reactions are gonna take place. So some take place inside the thylakoids and some reactions take place outside the thylakoid in the stroma. So let's talk about those chemical reactions that are taking place now. Take a look at this picture here. What you are seeing is this is the chloroplast. So this green line is the double membrane. Here we see some grana of thylakoids. Here's a highlighted one. And then out here is the empty space called the stroma. There are two parts to photosynthesis. Actually, there are many, 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 many parts to photosynthesis, but I said we're not going into those details. We're lumping them into two main parts, the light-dependent reactions and the Calvin cycle, also known as the light-independent reactions because this is called light dependent because this is the part that is using the sunlight and the Calvin cycle is known as light independent or sometimes also known as dark reactions because we don't need the sunlight. We've already used the sunlight, so we don't need it here. Those light dependent reactions. This is where water enters the thylakoid and then energy from the sunlight goes inside of here and there's gonna be a chemical reaction taking place, and we're gonna be using that energy from ripping apart the hydrogen from some of that uh, water, release some of that energy to make a little bit of ATP. And you think that's good, right? If you remember the last video, we learned ATP is the livable molecule. The, the plant should be fine, right? There's ATP, we're good, we're done, goodbye, go home, no. Because the sun will go down. And this plant needs to keep living at night without the sun. So this plant is going to store this ATP energy in a glucose. That way it can survive at night. Oh, I forgot to say, oxygen is gonna be released during this process, All right. All right, that ATP that we need is going to go into a huge series of chemical reactions and this ATP is going to be charging those chemical reactions. Within the Calvin cycle, what all those individual chemical reactions add up to is carbon dioxide from the plant breathing and more water from the plant drinking go into the stroma and that ATP is going to 
make them rearrange. If that's the chemical reaction we talked about in the beginning, where carbon dioxide mixes with water and this ATP energy is going to go into them to make what that equation said, to make glucose. All right, so breakdown. This is the last screen. Sunlight, solar energy is going to be used to make ATP. ATP energy is going to be used to make glucose. And then that's it, the plant's done until it's hungry. The, then the plant, or you, if you're hungry, you eat the plant, you get the glucose, will go into our next video, cellular respiration. And that's how we release energy from the glucose. So these two are photosynthesis, and this is the next video. So check Google Classroom, see if I left you any extra work. And until then, I will see you in the next video.